Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are studying biblical marks, becoming a healthy church, based on nine marks of a healthy church by Mark Dever. In this session, we'll be looking at 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, biblical church discipline or biblical church discipleship. Growth among God's people is the biblical pattern, not simply in numbers, but with growing members. Acts chapter 6, verse 1, the first part of it in verse 7. Now in those days when the number of disciples was multiplying, and in verse 7, then the word of God spread and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Acts chapter 12 in verse 24, but the word of God grew and multiplied. Acts 13 verse 49, and the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region. Acts 19 and verse 20, so the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. The early church grew numerically and it especially grew spiritually. God's growth plan, well, Ephesians chapter 4 verses 15 and 16, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Yet, <clears throat> only God provides spiritual growth in believers. Colossians chapter 2, verse 19, holding fast to the head from whom all the body, nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the increase that is from God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 and 7, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase so that he then neither he who plants is anything nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Paul realized that all he could do was thank God for spiritual growth when it comes and pray that it will. Second Thessalonians chapter one and verse three, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 11 to 13. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in, in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless, in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and all his saints, or with all his saints. Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Wait a minute. Do we even have a part in growth? Our text for this session speaks to that question. Second Peter chapter three and verse 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever, amen. We are commanded by God to grow spiritually in two ways, in grace and in knowledge. Growth is a sign of life. So many believers remain immature Christians for a lifetime, as if spiritual growth is optional. Growing trees are living trees, and growing animals are living animals. Growth involves increase and advancement. How do we grow spiritually? Well, it's not about methods. I mean, there are many different programs, systems, activities. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 8, For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. These things, what things? 
Look at verses 5 through 8 of 2 Peter 1. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christians are called to cultivate these qualities. Notice the result of growth in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 to 5. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you've tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Churches can become a set of tangible statistics, attendance, baptisms, giving, and membership figures. But all these fall short of true growth. What is the evidence of spiritual growth? Excitement? Increased use of religious language? Growing knowledge of scripture? Joy? Love? Concern for the church? Zeal? Praise? Confidence in faith? No, this is not the evidence of spiritual growth. Well, then, then what is? The evidence of spiritual growth is a life of increasing holiness that is marked by and rooted in a Christian denying of self in pursuing God's will. This is why church discipline is so important, that examples be clear, not confusing. No gardener sets out to grow weeds in his garden. Weeds are undesirable and have bad effects. They must be dealt with for the garden's sake. Good influences can be used by God for growth. Biblical preaching, listening to God from his word as he speaks into our lives, regardless of how uncomfortable it is. Biblical theology, God is the holy creator of all. The biblical gospel, it is its justice for sin by a substitute, Jesus. Biblical conversion of a new life in Christ. Biblical evangelism as we witness and God grows. Biblical church membership, members active and involved. Biblical church discipline, members pure for God's glory, and then biblical church leadership, equipping members for ministry. In this church environment, spiritual growth will be marked by Christians called into missions, older members involved in evangelism, increased praying, desire for more preaching, meetings characterized by spiritual conversation, increased giving, givers giving sacrificially, more members sharing the gospel, parents educating their children in the faith, a church that is composed of members growing in true Christ-likeness glorifies God. He gets credit for the growth. Let me give you some questions for the Christians we are responsible for. Questions for us to give to Christians that we're responsible for. In what particular way <clears throat> have you grown in your understanding of the Christian life since we last met? In what particular way have you grown in your practice of the Christian life since we last met? In what way do you feel that you need instruction? In what way are you disappointed in your own pursuit of holiness? And how specifically 
can I pray for you? What if a person doesn't grow spiritually? Hmm. First wonder if that person is not a Christian, but working to promote Christian discipleship and spiritual growth is an important mark of a healthy church. This is for you to think about as you have a great day.